Brought to you by Express Care Health and Skin Center. Get in, get out, get better. Welcome back, everybody. We are talking about Trigger Finger, and the woman on the trigger right now is Dr. Yopalan, <laughs> who is passing on this information, which, which is a remarkable topic, to say the least. Again, I had no idea about this, but you said you know, you've seen you know, more than one patient on Guam with this. Um, you seem to be, when you were illustrating, um, you were using your index finger a mm -hmm. lot to describe trigger finger. Does trigger finger tend to happen in one or more digits? Well, it tends to happen, first of all, in your dominant hand, meaning the right hand, typically, if, if you're right-handed. And then um, the, the index finger and the third finger will tend to be the ones that are more affected. Interestingly, our fourth and fifth fingers are usually used, most, most importantly, for grip. Mm -hmm. But our, first, uh, our, our thumb, index, and third finger, they're used for the pinching activities that tend to get affected more here. More precise control. And right. like, yeah. I mean, the I mouse. look at that. I just did that right now. I didn't yeah. even think about using like there my other go. two fingers. Oh, that's amazing. OK, um, somebody asked Dr. Lam, I crack my knuckles a lot, as most of us on Guam are prone to do. Does that make me more susceptible to trigger finger? No, it doesn't. Actually, um, uh, when you crack your knuckles, you're just releasing a little bit of nitrogen that's within that tendon sheath. You know, so you might hear a little pop or crack. Um, it in, in no way injures you. You, you don't get any harm. You, you don't incur any harm from doing that. It's just maybe annoying to your, your uh, fellow classmates. OK, well, somebody asked on a related note, uh, can trigger finger possibly be associated with carpal tunnel syndrome if I'm an office worker and I'm constantly using a mouse and or a keyboard? Yeah, um, it's another condition that might go along with repetitive injury, but not necessarily related. But the one, the way that they are both related is with diabetes. So people with diabetes will tend to have more carpal tunnel, more trigger finger, more inflammation in general in their body and especially in their tendons. So, so any tendon can be more affected in a diabetic person. And that that does associate with like nerve pain and things like that in the extremities. Sometimes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, can taking joint supplements aid with strengthening or relieving pain caused by a trigger finger? Well, um, taking supplements for the joints um, is a little controversial, but you can take something called chondroitin glucosamine, and that one's available in like a supplement or vitamin store. And um, you have to take that supplement for quite a while, maybe at least a month or if not two months before you really see an effect. So you have to be very patient with it. The other thing you could do that's helpful is apply heat because heat will bring more circulation to the area and therefore hopefully more lubrication to your joints. Um, hot wax is another way that people handle this, putting their the, putting a hot wax treatment. Mm. Yeah, um, massage, applying uh, things that are basically warming to the fingers. You know, people that tend to have arthritis and, and joint problems feel much worse in a cold climate or in a in a rainy on a rainy day, right? Sure. Than in a nice warm sunshiny day. Maybe take like a hot bath as opposed to mm -hmm. a cold shower. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, fair to say. Does trigger finger have a gender bias in how it reveals itself? You know, mm. is, is it more common in women or men? I'm not aware of that. I don't think that there's uh, too much difference. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Fair, very, very <laughs> honest answer. We appreciate yeah. that. Uh, we talked about uh, exercises, if you can do that. Um, so building off the fact that it may occur in men or women more commonly, mm -hmm. we, we honestly don't know. Can it be hereditary? If someone uh, in my family has that, will I be more prone to have trigger finger? Not necessarily. Um, arthritis, of course, tends to run in families, yeah. but um, uh, trigger finger is really um, largely a result of what you've been doing with your hands. If you've been very active chopping and cutting and, and, uh, or painting or doing things with your hands all the time, then you're more likely to get that at an older age. Hmm. Does it matter if, like, say, if I'm... Uh, like you know one of our our photographers and everything like that you know he works out in his uh, his ranch and everything so he's literally pushing mm -hmm. a carabao the whole time so yeah. he's, he's gripping or you know working with a yeah. uh, lawnmower yes as opposed to like if, if I'm a uh, musician and I'm constantly like doing stuff at a high yeah. rate but like if I'm playing guitar right there's a difference between me gripping for hours on yes. end and me like flailing away on some hot solo yeah very big difference because um, actually wiggling your fingers is, is kind of a healthy thing yeah. you know when you're doing that what's what's uh, most damaging to hands actually is vibration injury so we mentioned the lawnmower or uh, like a uh, yeah, um, construction worker type of equipment where with the with, pneumatic hammers yeah, on the road where you're, yeah. you're hammering uh, that that type of injury is actually more harmful to your hands because it's uh, s there, there's so much injury in such a short period of time. All right, well, Dr. Yeah. Lam, we thank you as always. I, You're I, welcome. I greatly appreciate the fact that you've <laughs> allowed us to learn about this, and I also agree greatly appreciate you've allowed me to use the word pneumatic in context. <laughs> Congratulations. All right, well, thank you. It was thank all you. because of you. We'll see you next week. <laughs> see you. And we'll see you guys on the flip side of this break. Stay tuned. Pneumatic.